My name is Mark, and uh, I'll be presenting uh, the next part of the uh, GATK uh, workflow, uh, which is uh, indel-based realignment. And what this is is it improves the original alignments of the reads uh, using a multiple sequence realignment. And so we're now here in the GATK workflow. Now, if you're using DNA, this is going to be the first use of the actual GATK. And so what is the purpose of indel realignment? Well, we have to realign around indels because when you align a read against the reference, near the ends of the reads, uh, it can trick, indels can be masked uh, by uh, when the mappers misalign uh, against the reference. And so these artificial mismatches can uh, harm uh, base quality score recalibration and variant detection later on in the workflow um, unless we use uh, this indel realignment. So this is a screenshot from the uh, Integrative Genomics Viewer, IGV. Uh, what we see here is a bunch of reads mapped to a reference genome. And here we see what appear to be uh, some SNPs or a cluster of SNPs on, on uh, both uh, near the beginning of these reads and near the ends of these reads. And because these SNPs happen to happen near the ends of these reads, as well as uh, the fact that these particular apparent SNPs happen on reads that are only facing in one direction, um, coupled with another thing, which is that we have a region of uh, homopolymer uh, that, that can cause some trouble for the aligners, that, that's an indication that, that this data might, be, uh, might benefit from a, the realignment step. And so if we pass that same data through realigner, uh, we find that this data is actually better explained uh, through a deletion. And what happens is now th those clusters of SNPs have now uh, disappeared. So the basic principles are uh, to find uh, three types of uh, realignment targets. So, we first, so there are three things that we, we will look for when uh, doing the realignment. The first is we're going to look at uh, known sites of where we've previously found uh, indels. Uh, indels that were found in the alignment of the reads to the reference genome. And sites where evidence suggests a hidden indel. And so these sites can be found from doing an entropy calculation and also computing an activity score that are based on things like looking for the number, like clusters of mismatches uh, in, in a particular region. So local realignment uh, identifies a more parsimonious uh, alignment uh, of a group of reads against the reference. And so now in the, when we, we've taken these reads individually and mapped them to this reference genome, and so now we, we appear to have these three adjacent SNPs. But if we now use a multiple sequence alignment, this data can also be explained as uh, a deletion. And so using, so we can now decide which one of these alignments do we think better explains the data. And in this case, we might uh, explain the data using uh, a deletion. So the score for this alternative consensus is the total sum of uh, quality scores of mismatching basis. So, so we're looking for an explanation of the data where we have fewer mismatches. And the, the, uh, the 
if the score of the best alternate uh, consensus is sufficiently better than the original alignment, then we'll uh, accept the uh, new uh, realignment. And so the basic protocol, how we actually go and do this, is through two steps. We first uh, use a tool in the GHK called Realigner Target Creator, which identifies targets within the, uh, within the genome where we want to uh, do the realignment step. And then where we actually, then the tool that called the Indel Realigner, which actually performs the realignment. And so the basic workflow is we take our BAM file and then using uh, the realigner target creator plus an optional list of known sites of uh, indels that have been previously found, we are going to produce a uh, intervals file. And so uh, this is just a pre-processing step and Using the command line, we might call this realign target creator using a, a reference genome. Our, this is a potential, this is an optional input. You don't have to have your original BAM file. Also, uh, a list of known indels is also optional input, but you have to have one of these two. And then uh, the output, which is going to be a list of intervals for on wh where you're going to, where the align aligner is going to realign. Um, if, if you already have a list of known indels, then you may not need to use uh, a BAM file. But um, using a list of known indels can uh, dramatically speed up the process and in improve your accuracy. So now uh, we should have our intervals file after, after we've run uh, Realigner Target Creator. And so we're now going to use, again, our original BAM file the intervals file, potentially, uh, again, a list of known sites, and plug this into the indel realigner. And this is, again, a sample command line use uh, where we use, again, the reference genome. Uh, we input our original BAM, a list of uh, known indels, and uh, the intervals where we want to do the realignment and uh, the output uh, BAM file. So of course, you must use the same uh, reference genome and original BAM and original v VCF that we used in the previous step if you use them. Um, otherwise, you, the data, what will be output will be inconsistent. Um, there are several processing options. Um, you, can, we, you can perform realignment only at known sites. This is, consider, this is a very fast approach, but uh, if you're looking, but you'll miss any new indels that have not yet been discovered. Um, what we recommend doing is um, using indels seen in the original BAM alignment, um, and uh, that, that'll also use the uh, entropy measure. Uh, but if you really can't tolerate, uh, if you really need to have the best data, then uh, you can, we can use a full Smith-Waterman Smith realignment. This is the most accurate, but it comes at a very heavy computational cost. So now, um, now that we've run the re, uh, Indel realigner, we now have our realigned BAM file, and so we can uh, look at these results, again, using uh, IGV. And so on the left, we have the same data uh, sequenced uh, using two different technologies. And uh, these reads have been aligned against the genome. And this is all before the Indel realigner has been called. And so what we see is what, we, uh, what appears to be three SNPs. And these three SNPs show up in the data using different sequencing technologies. And so it, so, but if we now use the Indel realigner, we find that the data is better explained not using two SNPs here, but rather 
as a deletion in this region. And again, we find that there's one of the, a small tandem repeat in this region that's, that's causing the uh, original uh, mapping step to uh, describe the data not quite uh, perfectly. Uh, so after you run Indel Realigner, you can find out where it's done work by looking through the BAM file. Uh, we put in an OC tag, which is the original cigar string that was found in the original alignment by the mapper. And so this is the new cigar string, and then this is um, the old one. And so you could potentially go back to your original data. Now, there's no for formal measure to assess the uh, completeness of the um, realignment process. Um, so, um, so you might ask, is realignment still necessary uh, with the latest software? So later in this, later today, uh, you'll learn about haplotype color, and it has its own uh, realignment step within it. And so you might think, well, that because of that, uh, this step may not be necessary. But it turns out that there are several other steps within the pipeline where uh, Indel that can be affected by Indel realignment. And one of these is in the base quality score recalibration. And so um, if, if, if you don't run Indel realignment, then what can happen is some of these artificial SNPs can uh, have an, uh, an effect on um, the base quality score recalibration. It's also still useful for if you need to use legacy tools, for example, if you need to use the unified genotyper for calling variants, then uh, it's, it's really ne necessary to run uh, Indel Realigner. And so now um, I'd like to remind you that we're now still here in the GATK workflow. And, um, and here we have further, further reading. Is any questions? Yes. According to AMI's uh, evaluations, it is not um, necessary. Um, so, and, and to be honest, they, uh, really useful back when we had the unified genotyper. With a haplotype color, it is not quite as impactful. We still think that it can solve problems. Um, so if you have the compute, it's better to do it. Um, but it's not as n absolutely necessary as it used to be. So what Mark says is absolutely correct about, you know, uh, it, it can potentially um, really improve the BQSR results, and there are some corner cases where it can have an effect, but overall it's, um, it, it is not quite as impactful. And for RNA-seq, because the haplotype caller handles RNA um, natively, it seems that it is potentially even less impactful. Um, yeah. 